Hello, everyone. We are finally approaching the premiere date for the highly anticipated film of Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper in A Star Is Born, the fourth remake of this story. Um, and I am extremely excited. It comes out next Friday, and we are finally getting a new song off of the soundtrack, which they've kept very secretive up until this point. Um, it's the song The Shallow, or Shallow, and we've heard it in the trailers that were released over the summer, and it definitely got us all very excited. Um, and I'm happy that they did choose to release it a week in advance to give us something before next Friday. So I'm going to talk about this track, um, and I just watched her on Ellen. You know, she has this glowing, you know, confidence, but also this you know, down-to-earth sweetness in her persona. I'm talking about Lady Gaga, or Lady, as she now likes to be referred to. Um, we are definitely in the presence of someone who is very humble, but is also really trying to get that Oscar. And I think that this kind of stuff is, you know, I mean, it's tough. I'm a little torn because, I must admit, I, I feel as though there's been a shift in Lady Gaga in her career in the last several years. I feel like, you know, I, I've I talked about something happened after art pop and it's almost like a completely different person. It feels to some extent like took over or, you know, maybe that was a completely different person that was currently, you know, in her in that period where, you know, her music was much more, you know, electronic and much more pop and, you know, I'm not going to talk too much about her career in that kind of retrospect, but, you know, with Joanne and everything um, with Tony Bennett, and now, of course, with this film, I can sense that, you know, a lot of her fans are getting hungry for her to return with more like more pop music that she's done in the past, electronic dance music. And I'm, I have to be honest, I'm a little bit in that same boat myself. It's, you know, it's been a long time since that we've gotten that side from her. And I I appreciated the stripped back Joanne era for what it was. Um, but I kind of hoped that maybe it was just going to be just one, like, two or three year era. And then we would have her return back to being different. Like, not necessarily recreating Born This Way or Art Pop. I don't want that. But just something different, you know, and and maybe not so country and maybe, you know. And and now we have A Star is Born. Now, of course, A Star is Born was announced actually right after she had finished recording Joanne and right before the album was announced two years ago where she was cast in that role. And so it's not really her fault. I mean, she didn't know that A Star is Born was coming right after Joanne. When she was writing Joanne, she was thinking, this is the one time where I can really like expose a different side to myself in terms of my songwriting and stripping everything back and, and, and really embracing, you know, what she calls, you know, the great American songbook, like tributes to greats of the past, you know, that she has always admired. And she didn't realize that after, right after she'd finished recording Joanne, she was going to actually be recording music for a film that would be almost like Joanne 2.0, but it would have this huge epic story arc and, you know, it would be this huge Oscar thing. And so, the you know, the fact that these two are coming next to each other, I can understand how that could be a little frustrating for some of us who are just like, but where is the electronic dance music? And not just that, because I know that, you know, I'm not, pop music is pop music, and I really appreciate music that has heart, music that has soul, and of course also that I find enjoyable to listen to. There's just taste that involves that. But, you know, I like something about the artistic creativity behind the performances, behind the interviews, you know, everything Lady Gaga used to do was just so over the top, but I loved it, you know? I, I mean, people come up and talk about the me dress and just like, shut up about the me dress, you know? She did so many revolutionary, amazing things. And, you know, now we see her coming through with A Star is Born, and it's very prim and proper, and it's like Joanne, but it's maybe a little bit less country. Um, and it's, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, is this just a little underwhelming? Um, I'm really, really excited to see this film. Like, let's not get it twisted. Um, I've learned to accept that, you know, Lady Gaga has deep down just a profound love of music and performing and she actually talks about how she also had wanted to be an actress but she thought she'd never make it in that industry how ironic um back way back when and there is something so classic about her that's always been there i mean if you see her stripped down of versions of bad romance or poker face i mean it was always there even in 2009 
I do think that Lady Gaga will return. Not not return to like doing the same thing. That's not necessarily what it means. But I do think that we will see a return to more of the extravagance or more of the Carrie Richardson, you know, the the art pop aesthetic, so to speak. Um, I, I do think we will see a return to that. But as a matter of when, that's a bit of a bigger question. You know, a lot of people think it's soon. And I keep talking about how I'm like, not so sure that her sixth studio album is coming. Well, looking at the track list for A Star Is Born, I'm like, oh my God, I think this might be LG6 because there are so many songs and there are so many solo tracks. Now, of course, I need to talk about The Shallow. I'm getting really distracted here. Um, but The Shallow is one of the duet songs where Bradley and Gaga both sing. And there are plenty of those throughout the record. And anyway, so I, I'm, you know, I, my view, this is LG6. I mean, we're getting how many songs are on this track list? 19 or something. So it's going to be a real body of work. So all that being said, this song is anthemic. It's triumphant. Um, we all heard the snippets in the trailer and we got goosebumps and... There's not much else I can really say. It's actually, you know, a pretty simplistic song. Um, it's a little shorter than I was expecting it to be. And Bradley Cooper's vocals were the biggest, I think, surprise for all of us because we didn't really get to hear it so much in the trailer. But he really can sing. And uh, I was not something I was ever really expecting to I mean, you know, when I heard he was going to be singing, I was like, well, is it going to be like Pierce Brosnan singing in Mamma Mia? Like, or is he going to be auto-tuned or... You know, I was like, Lady Gaga wouldn't be doing this if she felt like he wasn't a real singer or he wasn't, like, worthy of being a good pairing for her. Because Lady Gaga made it very clear that when they were filming this, that nothing was lip synced, that everything was live reported or live performed um, as much as possible. You know, so it's not, this isn't high school musical. This isn't dubbed. This is like the performances are the actual singers singing and they're live taking that as they film this in, in, in scenes that they can. I mean, of course, there are scenes where they're not, you know, actually singing and they're shown in the film. But so this song is showing the power dynamic and the contrast and the beauty of both of their vocals. Um, it starts out just very intriguing and inviting. Um, that acoustic guitar leads you in and before it explodes and, and that tension builds. Um, we're far from the shallow now. Watch as I dive in. I'll never reach the ground. We've, we've reached a point of no return. And I feel that very strongly in the emotional delivery of both of their vocals. I would say that still Gaga's runs that she does towards the final refrain, which is so elevated, is just incredible. Um, and her voice is shaky. And I think that's important to remember that this song is in the context of, I think, one of the first times that her character, Allie, gets on the stage and is singing with him. And you can hear in the beginning verses of her that her voice is just a little shaky. And that's done on purpose because she's feeling timid. She's feeling unsure about her own presentation. Um, and that was, that's what makes this song almost more alluring is, you know, it's Bradley kind of beckoning her onto the stage. He sounds a lot more confident. You can just hear it in his voice. And she is just like slowly opening up. And this is the song where that happens. And it's a pivotal moment, I believe, in the plot and story and in the soundtrack. So I love that you can hear that coming across. I actually love that in the live recording, you still hear the audience in parts of the song. Um, so it gives it that live feel. Um, just authentic, raw, powerful vocals and very soft, you know, acoustic, clean instrumentation carrying us through. And I don't think that this song is necessarily indicative of how every single song on this record is going to look like. I mean, we've got the La Vie en Rose is being covered. We have a couple other covers. We've got, you know, DJ White Shadow listed as a producer on a few songs that are just Gaga and not Bradley, and then Bradley has his own songs. This is going to be probably all over the place in terms of genre. I think we're going to get a lot more country, particularly from Bradley Cooper. I think his style and his sound, and that's just his thing, is it's going to be more country. But um, Gaga is probably going to be, you know, classical crossover, and then she's going to be country, and then she's going to be pop, and possibly even EDM dance. So it's going to be a wide range of songs and possibly even songs that aren't even in the film are still on the soundtrack because they were just like conceived as that part of this thing. I'm not entirely sure. It's such a large soundtrack. 
Um, we might just hear snippets of the songs in the movie and then we hear the full length song in the soundtrack. Um, there's a lot about the story and the plot that I'm not aware of yet. So um, apparently there's you know, a lot of drama and tragedy and I'm sure it'll be an amazing film. And I will film my review of this movie. Um, I know I haven't been doing a lot of movie reviews on this channel and that is something I would like to change. There's just so much music I want to review first. Um, and I can only do so much right now. But I have reviewed, you know, like I reviewed Beauty and the Beast because I wanted to talk about the music just as much as the film. For certain films where the music is such a huge part of it, I will be reviewing that. I'm like really excited for the upcoming Mary Poppins movie. I'm definitely going to be reviewing that to talk about the music, but also the film. So I will be reviewing A Star is Born. Um, however, it will be after I've seen it. And I can't guarantee that I'm going to see it opening weekend. But I will see it sometime in mid-October, probably. It'll, it wouldn't be longer than two weeks, probably, before I see it. And then I'll film my review. So expect to see that. But I had to just share my thoughts on this song. Um, what do you guys think? Are you a little bit worn down by this repeated, you know, acoustic guitar kind of gaga? And are you kind of wishing that you could see a little bit more of that extravagance again that we've not seen in a long time? Because... It does feel like The Shallow could have easily fit on Joanne. Um, and it's sort of like, uh, oh, we've been through this already. Like, could we probably progress a little bit more? But I actually think this song is actually a lot stronger than a lot of the tracks on Joanne. So I can't complain there. Or are you just like, no, this is, you know, this, or are you somewhere in the middle? Like, just let me know. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll link my reviews to all of Lady Gaga's records. The only one I have not reviewed as of yet is The Fame. I'm planning on reviewing that at the end of this month because it's going to be 10 years since it was released in the US at the end of this month. And that's significant to me because that's when I first engaged with that record. I know it already came out, you know, 10 years ago in like late August. I talk about this, but um, I wasn't able to get it uploaded then. So I still have to review The Faint, but I've reviewed all her other albums. So I hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the Star is Born review. I hope you enjoy. Thanks. Bye.